You are listening to the This Life Podcast with Dr. Drew Pinsky and me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this time. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. I dig that. You live right there in the opening. It's uh, We should really hammer home where, why what that, what that is. Okay, well, hang on a second. So <laughs> let, me, let me just say- No, no, just, no. I'm kidding. No. I'm n- sincerely kidding. No, we're going to talk about where that came from. So okay. but just a second. Uh, so this is a special This Life podcast. Uh, brought in my radio partner presently. You can hear us both on KBC 790 AM, Midday Live, Monday through Friday, noon to 3 Pacific time. So um, our number here is 323-649-8268 if you want to call and be a part of the program. And so you live. Tell the story. There's a scene at the end of Boogie Nights where <laughs> Dirk Diggler is no longer formerly Eddie Adams. He takes on the moniker Dirk Diggler. And he's no longer like the head porn guy. He's no longer the rock star of well, the, porn. The videos are taken over from film. Right. And he's, yeah. he's hit uh, hard times because of drugs. And he is broken and high and tweaking out on meth. And so uh, uh, Johnny Johnny Doe has taken over for Dirk Diggler, and Johnny Doe's character he plays like a like a, a, a hard boiled cop maniac. And and in one of the scenes of his porn movies, he is a a gun to the head of a young lady who is filleting him. <laughs> he's deciding whether or not this blowjob is good enough for her to live. If not, he's going to shoot her. And then he decides, yes, in fact, this blowjob is good enough. You live. You live. And he screams it out. He's like, <laughs> you live, bitch. Yeah! And so that was his voice, the opening of this sequence. Here. And and for years on Loveline, we, just because we thought that was funny, we started saying, you live. And then... It became a greeting. Naturally, like, uh, it became like kind of this positive rally. No, it call. became, you live became like a, uh, first of all, a code. Like, just the way you'd say. It was hey, like our Baba Booey. Or, no, Hey Now. It was yeah. like Hey Now for, for the Stern Show fans out there. And uh, it became, it became more generalized even to be like Aloha. It's like yes, hello, it's goodbye. <laughs> it was like a greeting. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So it was great. Let's bring in Dave Navarro. How about that? All right. Hey, man. How are you guys? Ladies we are good. Job. Thanks for having me. Dave Navarro. Does Dave need an intro? He's one of the most important figures in alternative rock music. Yeah. Uh, I mean... That's very kind. Peppers. Uh, Were you in Chili Peppers when Bob Forrest was hanging around with them? Well, no, but I knew Bob Forrest from the Jane's Addiction days. Early, early days, 1988, 89. Actually played with Thelonious Monster a number of times and... Did a lot of drugs with Bob, too, as I'm sure you can Every, imagine. Everybody did drugs with Bob, but he freaked everybody out. Well, he was one of those guys, and, and God rest his soul, like Scott Weiland was, who, when like-minded people got together and did drugs together, there was one guy where we all looked at each other and were like, oh, thank God we're not like that yeah. guy. Because That's the he guy. was... That's the guy the Chili Peppers all looked to and went, yeah. oh, well, no. Well, we, no, no. we would be sitting there with needles hanging out of our arms going... As long as we're not doing what Bob's doing, we're okay. And it says it's just, a lot it, to the recovery community that he is now a big part of. I he mean, had, it's amazing, and yeah. it, it's just, and it is such a testament to how well that community can work for people. Yeah, if someone who's fallen that far can be doing what he's doing and living the life he's yeah, living. Yeah, and everybody knows the guy or gal who's who's not doing too well that somehow turns it around. Bob was. Was written off. I mean, we all wrote him off, yeah, because he he was in and out and in and out for a decade. But he's one of these guys who would come pound on your door and you'd pretend you weren't home. He's There's that guy. A, in in I, the I, well, many people. I'll did never that forget him. this. They're at a at a twelve step group. I can't say which one, but in the literature it says, "We realize we know only a little," and it's a preamble that talks about you know the program. And he's like, "See right here." Right here, they know a little. See, they're saying, they're admitting they don't know everything. So he was making a big issue. He would go through the literature and find Uh, loopholes as to uh, why he could get high. There's a famous story about him coming to meetings and drinking beer in the back of the room. And he he was such a, (laughs) he likes to piss people off. And he, uh, Bob, no. He was so uh, frustrated that when he left the meeting, they'd always go, Come on, Bob, keep coming back, man. It's all right. And he's like, Screw you guys. He kept coming back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, you know, he was actually became somebody who, I wanted to emulate. I mean, he can't. He he went from a guy who I was fearful of <laughs> to a guy that I wanted to be like. If, if which if, is pretty incredible. If anybody wants to learn more about that stage of his life, uh, watch Bob and the Monster. You seen that documentary? I haven't. You recommended so it, good. and I intend to. So good. I feel like I was there for a lot of it, so it's not yeah. really going to be showing me anything I don't know. Uh, there has to be parts of 
a lot of music documentaries where you think to yourself, like, that was at the peak of, I'm sure, a lot of fun, but really dark times for you. You know? Oh, you're, yeah. You're thinking back, I mean, you're, there's probably albums you don't want to listen to. Um, there are albums I don't remember making. Yeah. For sure. And like, I would imagine uh, the my favorite one to listen to, which is Ritual, De Lo Habitual, I don't remember making. And I've recently come to learn that we made it twice. You seriously don't remember any of the studio? I mean, process? I remember being in the room. I remember where it was, but I don't I have no recollection of putting oh tracks my down. God. And I came to learn maybe 20 years later that we recorded the whole album and it was terrible and we scrapped it and started again. And I had zero recollection of that. And it just because you knew the songs were great, it's just the the quality of the recording was terrible because of. I, I don't. I think the performances were poor. Yeah. I think honestly. Wow. And 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 the crazy thing is the the drugs that I was doing weren't like blackout drugs. It just was such a muted existence, which is really right. the best way to describe it. That so is I a great way I was able to be there, but I was just the whole, I did wasn't able to experience anything or feel anything. Matthew Perry says that he doesn't remember most of filming Friends. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and so they think wow. of, and put that into consideration. Oof. Like Dave said, it's not like they're drinkers or. Uh, 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 you know, using hallucinogens. It's you just can that you're function. getting to the level that you're so empty that you just kind of that goes away. Yeah, the and and you might remember it if you were back. It's called state dependent learning. Sometimes people go back into the state they were in. They'll suddenly remember things when they were in that state. Mm. See well, what I'm, saying? I, I'm not saying you should return to that state. Well, right, see, right, as, right. A, that as a stimulant addict, I am completely the opposite. I become hyper, hyper aware of everything. Aware oh, yeah. of like I'm, if, I, if I listen to ritual, especially like songs like Three Days and stuff, I get freaky because i think of my uh, like summer days and you know altadena like just <laughs> sitting there smoking rocks you know so you were a crack guy or a meth yeah, guy i love to smoke crack and yeah. I, well and meth for a long time too it right. depended really depended on geography I when mean, you're in california it was so much easier to use meth my guess when i was from in... some crazy scary ass stories about meth dealers oh yeah oh. oh yeah i mean i went i dabbled in that world i was the kind of drug user that if my primary choice wasn't available, right. I'd still settle for what you have. How's it going? Yeah, you know, garbage I, mean, can. I, I have a quick question. Have yeah. we welcomed our Facebook audience yet? Are they here yet? Uh, okay, welcome everybody on Facebook. Uh, thank you for joining us. Also at the YouTube channel, they're out there. Okay, YouTube, thank you. And uh, you're getting your wish. Mike and I are doing a podcast. There have been lots and lots of, uh, what, uh, demands. Demands. That, that Loveline be re- the sort of... The Love Line team be reunited in a podcast. This is the You Leave Live podcast. Well, if and you really also like it, what? a podcast where we take calls. Yeah, we're, yeah right. I mean, that's we the... take call, and uh, it, which is different than our KBC show. Those of you that listen to seven ninety AM here in Los Angeles, we do a daily show that's more about what's going on in the world. But we we miss we miss everybody, so we want to come in, do calls, recreate the magic a little bit. And Dave Navarro very kindly asked, yeah. uh, kindly agreed to join us. Three two three six four nine eight two six eight. James and we'll be here for a while. So you know, if you don't get through, hang on or call me. You know, we'll we'll sort of announce to you how long we're going to be here. But uh, Dave's got a radio show. He very kindly had me on. It's Dark Matter. You can see it on uh, Dash Radio. You can hear on Dash Radio. I'm on episode 43, and that was really fun. Yeah. What a great setup that Dash yeah. thing. Yeah. Do you know about this really Dash nice. setup? I'm aware of it. I don't know. I, oh my god! Yeah. I, it's, it's, they it's just me. do tons of live radio out of there. It's all internet. But then you know we we throw the podcast up after the broadcast, and yeah, it's the best well, place I've found so far. Where do they get the podcast? Uh, iTunes. Oh, so just go to iTunes, search. Not your website it, or something? No, I, I, I made sure because there are so many different places and it gets confusing yeah, out there. And yeah. now, you know, the marketplace is so congested yeah. with podcasts and shows. And I use it YouTube, is it this, is it that? iTunes is the one that's just the number one podcast download place. I You're think. good at it, though. I mean, I mean, you've always been good at being on the radio. There's, there's a, it takes a certain, it's obviously not playing classical violin, but. Some people <laughs> don't have that ability. You've all, even since the Camp Freddy days, I've always thought like, man, you're good at. Being well, on what the I love, and that was at Indie 103. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. What I love about it is that it's instantaneous. It goes away immediately. Well, now you can play it back. It used but, to go out, but the it's vapors. live. Yeah, yeah, it used to go out yeah. into the vapors. Yeah. And then I was psyched to come in here and do. You know, I was asked by your lovely wife, Doctor Drew's podcast. You know, to come in. I was like, great, can't wait to be there. And then she's like, don't wear any stripes because there's cameras. <laughs> and I was like, ah. <laughs> So it's not really that fun, is it? You know what I mean? Because like that's the other thing I loved about radio is that no there's visual. no visual. I know I would come in yeah, like pajamas. Yeah, you'd still be shirtless yes. anyway. Don't lie. Hell yeah, we know. Hell yeah. Cole and I would come in like really look like homeless people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they went now. And then the advent of the cell phone. Everybody wants a picture, so you mm-hmm. kind of got to put it together. I like that you say like Carol and I used to, as if Adam now wears a tuxedo everywhere oh, he goes. Oh yeah, like, no. but, but we the his thing too. With the, the Adam and Doctor Drew podcast, we sit in front of cameras on that thing too. If, if certain, not everyone gets to see it. If they have some sort of way of. Getting 
getting to it, but you know, you got Adam it. was the, Adam really was ahead of his game though, as far as pe- complaining that because uh, listen, no one really besides maybe Stern has ever achieved as much in radio as Adam. He's he's the, one of the kings of terrestrial, you know, uh, syndicated radio. And um, but he used to complain all the time. I remember listening on Loveline. He'd be about like everything I do. I, I leave this this room tonight, this studio, and it just kind of goes away. Oh, he and was, that's why he was so motivated to do yeah, movies. He, and, yeah, he would tell me because it was. It's like he goes like we're. It's like we're creating. We're manufacturing something, and all this byproduct goes down the river. But I mean, <laughs> that's that's no different than a live performance. Yeah, I mean, that is what you know. You tune in for the live that's moment. That's what's nice. Yeah. That's what's exciting. Yeah. That's what, that's what I miss about a lot of live performances, and and certainly musicianship on stage is that. A lot of it is, is tracks. A lot of it is pre-recorded. It and and it you miss that that visceral experience. I I saw um, who was it that I saw uh, like on a reunion tour, and even for me, who's like a, a big big fan and someone who appreciates, it gets really geeky about like the nuances of rock and roll. Mm. Uh, it was Pavement. Pavement got back together oh, yeah. maybe like five six years ago, and they were playing, and I was. It took me, someone who fell in love with those songs and really loves live performances, it took me a, a bit to adjust to hearing mistakes. Because mm. even rock bands nowadays, like Dave says, they play to tracks and there's so much kind of like pre-recorded electronic noises and things. like It's It was weird. We, we actually know? put our mistakes on track. So yeah. so if you hear mistakes at a Jane's Addiction show, they're intended. They're actually on the backing tracks. Yeah. And and there's something like that. <laughs> well, no, no, but we're both like, not sure if you're serious. I'm not no. joking. I'm joking. Let me. Well, the reason I'm I like, okay. the reason why I assumed you were telling the truth and that you wouldn't I'm obviously wouldn't it's to purpose. make it appear as though it was live. You throw well, a mistake on the track, then it's the like, same people... reason you're using vinyl. The, you you could have done that for the same reason you're using vinyl because it's a lost form. It's a lost form. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and and I remember Perry on Loveline telling us that he like they were one of you guys were one of the few bands that wrote to the lyrics. As opposed to like the oh, band yeah. getting together and writing music, and then Perry going and doing some poetry. I don't understand that kind of music making, and I yeah. think that's one of the things that happened. You know, because I spent a few years in the Chili Peppers after coming from Jane's Addiction, did like a couple years in Chili Peppers, and then went back to Jane's Addiction, and it was so alien to me that the band wrote a bunch of songs and then just presented them to Anthony, and he would write the lyrics right. afterwards. It's you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but. It struck me as really strange because I felt yeah. like if we don't know the story we're telling, how do we? How do you create the music? Mm. I, I've it, always I've had that thought myself. Yeah. I'm not a musician, but I always wondered how that worked. If I mean, it yeah. works really well for a lot of people. I just uh, don't relate to it. Yeah, it's. I want you know, see the Beatles. Doc- I mean, there's certain ba- there's, there's certain there's, acts though that you realize there's a, there's no possibility. I just watched that the, they would do the opposite. I just watched the Beatles thing touring years. Uh-huh. Did that doc? Is that the one you saw? No, I've it's, saw, it's another good one. It's, it's a Ron Howard film. Oh, the Ron Howard yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is how is there's several parts to that? Correct. I guess I saw the touring years. I guess. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Pretty. But I, didn't, I didn't realize multiple parts. I got to watch the rest. If you of wanted it. to, I, I think that's the one that has multiple parts. But I, I it could be because they ended. They end at uh, Sergeant Pepper. Because they're speaking of vinyl. I recently went back and got all those old Beatles, like the mono ones. Yeah. And if you listen to Sergeant Pepper on vinyl, the way it came out, it is a weird experience. Super weird. It's true. It's di- it's totally different. Bean was from Kevin and Bean was telling you know when they first it was maybe a decade ago they released. A lot of the Beatles albums in original mono, how right. they're supposed to be, right. you know. And uh, he's like, "You got to go out and you, you've got to go get them. It's totally <laughs> different." And I, I was like, "How really? How different yeah. can it be?" But you're, Dave's right. You go back, you listen to it. That's how they intended it, and there's a reason, you know. Let's uh, talk to John real quick. If we can Tony real quick. John, I'm gonna pull him up. Hey, John. Hey, this is John Leiderman, by the way. Oh, uh, for, for Photoshop show, wizard. <laughs> John, there. I didn't, I didn't imagine your, this being your voice somehow, but good to meet you. Esme told me to tell you guys hi. She's going to try to call in, but she doesn't know if she can or not. The only, the um, only so Mexican hi, in Wisconsin, Esme. <laughs> it's really, truly. Yeah, yeah, she, she is a, she's a great, a great champion of... Uh, um, the Dr. Drew podcast. But John, thank you for all the tweets and the follow and everything. He follows our KBC show every day and we look forward to what he has to say. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> yeah. I just want to call and say hi and and it's it's awesome being a first caller too. Sweet. Thank you, dude. Yeah, that worked pretty well. And uh, you know, we'll we'll you think we should keep doing this? Yes, for sure. Right. For sure. All right, buddy, you live. Get going get going right, you on. Live too. You live, sir. Get going on some Photoshop for us for this show. <laughs> oh, he's, he's going to be up with it. He's going to be up with it. I will do. Uh, he's very, uh, he, he's, 
uh, you know, I don't like it, but he steers away from you and I having gay sex. In the photo. Sh- oh yeah, yeah like I, yeah, I'd you appreciate. Keep, you keep putting that. I would appreciate it if there was like some serious. And my listeners action. have no problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about ink for a second. Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, where can we see it on Spike? Right? Oh, my show, yeah, yeah. Ink Master. It's yeah. on Spike TV. It's uh, Tuesdays from. I think it's at 10 p.m., I think. I haven't seen it in quite a while. Six seasons? How many We're seasons? on season nine. We're starting season 10 okay. in Listen, a couple of months. It's a great show. It's very enjoyable. I, I have tattoos. I, I like the art. I like the culture. Mm. But even you, you had to, like, after season one or two, you're thinking to yourself, like, okay, I'll, I'll cash this check, but there's no way. I didn't think in a million years. <laughs> in a million years. Ten seasons of this thing. But, you know, what we've come to learn is that it's... It's fascinating to watch people, whether you're a fan of tattooing or not, yeah. it's fascinating to understand and, and see the artistry at work. Yeah. Because really, that's the, that's the star of the show, is the artistry. And I think that people who aren't into tattoos, like my father, watched it with me one time and was really blown away with the fact that this is a, a legitimate art form that requires skill and talent. And uh, you know, I think if anything good has come from the show, it's that we've made that globally a little bit more known. I, I think that is for for a lot of people from a lot of any generation kind of before my I mean probably anyone Drew's age mm-hmm. and above is that they they just up until you know recently did not believe it was art. Yeah. It was uh, just it's something dirty it, sailors it, did or Well, you know. yeah, certainly when I was growing up. For yeah. Sure, yeah. for sure. But what did my wife just ask you when you came in here? She asked me for a recommendation for a tattoo artist in New York. And I told crazy, her what to get. Crazy thing about the longevity of the show. Last year's winner, Ryan Ashley, was not a tattoo artist when season 1 premiered. Oh my god. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then went on to win the whole thing. It I, that does not help things when you hear things <laughs> like that. When like I've I've talked to plenty of people who like have a decades long career in radio mm-hmm, who are mm-hmm. like I grew up listening to you. I'm like, dude, how? Is, whoa, I'm not you. I'm not at you. Grew up listening to me phase yet. Well, That's I mean, for Drew. She won. Oh, she won you. this particular. And the thing about this competition, uh, I want to make this very clear. I won't move off it. But you know, a lot of people think we're looking for the greatest tattooer in the world, or we're looking the great. We're not. We're, whoever wins this game wins this game. It's it's full of a lot of different twists and turns, and they're strategizing and they're throwing people under the bus. And so yeah. it's more like Survivor with tattooing. It's a TV show. It's a TV yeah, show. I mean, so she won this season fair and square, and she's a gifted, great tattooer. But does that mean that whoever wins Ink Master is the greatest in the world? Not by a, by a mile. And I don't know if there is a greatest in the now, world. Now, producer Susan, do we need to take a break? It's been past the time you said I should break. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And for our Facebook viewers and uh, YouTube, do they get a break too? Or do they, do they? No, they should stay tuned. They yeah. get to watch Geico commercials. They get, yeah. to, uh, they get to watch us uh, continue to come. I will say the best investment I ever made was YouTube Red. It's great. I will tell you, it's worth whatever it costs a month yeah. to skip every ad. You should get into YouPorn Brown. It's a whole right, different... We'll take a little break. <laughs> Be right back after this. Yeah, there are a lot of factors that lead to recovery, and particularly success and recovery, but programs that challenge patients, that don't gratify them, that often is the most effective. And that's what we like about Last House Sober Living in Los Angeles. Last House structured program based on accountability and your actions, living a certain kind of life. Not like those luxury treatment centers that kind of feed the narcissism, entitlement, and selfishness. Last House works to combat the learned helplessness some of these millennials have. Also, device dependency. A lot of places uh, shrink from that one. And the codependent family system that needs a lot of help. The community challenges addicts with disciplinary systems that teaches them consequences for their choices and actions. The program isn't easy. In fact, it's quite difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. It's hard work to recover. Their theory is, much like diamonds, recovered addicts are forged under pressure. If you or a loved one is looking for a program that aligns with so many of the characteristics we believe lead to a successful recovery, please have a look at Last House. Learn more, visit thelasthouse.net. Again, that is thelasthouse.net. Visit them today. Welcome back. This is a You Live special uh this live podcast, and uh, you, and we're on YouTube, and we're on Facebook, and we appreciate you guys all being here. And uh, the reason, amongst other things, uh, there was a big demand for Mike and I to re- recreate the magic again and uh, take calls, which we're anxious to do. We'll get to in just a second here. And uh, you can watch us. You listen to us every day on 7, 9 a.m. Uh, talk radio if you want. Yes, uh, you but can. But we don't, get, we don't get these kinds of calls there. So let's no. go, let's go <laughs> to... Uh, we get the, you know, the thing about liberals is... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Or I disagree with your guess. Okay, let's talk to Chansey. Chansey. She's 15, whatever that, whatever that number is. There. I'm going to say it's Chauncey. Uh, they said like chance. She, Damn. she actually wrote it out. Chauncey, for me. as in being there. Hello, Peter Sellers. Ch- Chancy, am I spelling you pronounce your name correctly? <laughs> Chancy Gardner. This is crazy, yes. everyone. Namaste. Namaste. My name is Namaste. I'm calling from the Netherlands. Oh, Hi. fantastic! Wow, as Can most callers me? are. <laughs> yes. Have you been to the Van Gogh Museum there? My heart, like my. So, to the, no, not Bango, not yet, but I love art, though. But this is crazy. I'm, like, watching you live through Facebook on my laptop, and my heart is beating, like, through my whole, like, spine. I love it. This is crazy. How old are you, Chancy? Navarro. Namaste. I'm Namaste. 32 years Oh, okay, young. great. Uh, what are you wearing? Uh, how yes. old is she? 32. She's All plenty right. old to talk Sorry? about this. Because Dutch women, who <laughs> that's almost Forget always a, 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 a win. Yeah. Well, unless you're in the red light district, and then it's debatable yeah. if they're women. Oh, that's Have true. you been down? It really, no, it is really true. It's, let's, I, I've walked let's through. Let's let this lovely young lady <laughs> live her dream of talking to Dave Navarro, yeah, and then, Dr. Drew, I will uh, fill him in on my time in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. he's got my, Mike has a story for every major Did city. Did you have an accidental, oh, an accidental, yeah, made you re-question your whole... I wish. Yeah. So, like, I wish. Really? Oh, hold on. Chan- I'm let's say what sorry to interrupt. Like, you're all... You are all talking about Amsterdam, but recently CNN named Rotterdam, my hometown, the coolest city in the world. So you should all come to Rotterdam and visit. You never oh, know. It really is. To. I've been there many but times. But I have I... a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. You've clearly never been Can there. I, I have a question Please, for Chancellor. Dave. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dave yes. Navarro. Yes, dear. So, hello? Yeah, you're still <laughs> listening. Go do it. You got him. And begin. <laughs> All right. So my question to to Mr. Navarro is, so I know you've been walking this uh, planet for over a uh, half a century. He loves wow. to be reminded. And Thank don't you. get it wrong. I love it. Don't get it stopped. I love it. But my question to you is, uh, so I just found out a couple of months ago, you have the ability to disconnect like your conscious mind from your body to be free of pain. And my question to you is, have you ever tried orgasmic transcending meditation? Yes, I do. I do uh, twice a day, 20 minutes twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. Orgasmic transcending? Orgasmic transcending? I didn't hear that word, but uh, I'm willing to. Yes. (laughs) That sounds even better. I I went to the David Lynch Foundation. They didn't teach me any of that. (laughs) I, I, I don't know what you're so talking about. Please explain. If you're, so this is the interesting thing. For the first time in 26,000 years, I'm calling all the way from all the, across the Atlantic Ocean mm-hmm. to offer you, even though you have like a rich history, I Googled you, to learn more about orgasmic transcendent meditation, I, Mr. If, Navarro. Let me ask you, if I, if I make my way to Rotterdam, might I have an instructor? An instructor. You. What kind of instructor do you need if you have law of attraction? It's not easy and not difficult to find. (laughs) A vaginal instructor. Vaginal instructor. Yes. All right. Well, Well, thanks for, for, uh, you know, (laughs) filling us in on this. I'm not exactly sure. That I know what you're talking about, but I but, appreciate but it. I do want Chance to put her on hold. I do want Chancy to listen to what we're about to talk about. You, you have, you, you, because this is a perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll continue it on Facebook. Okay, thank okay, you. Good. But uh, I like how she's Dutch, but says Navarro like my grandma. I know. Hi, mijo. In Navarro. It did catch my ear. Uh, I, I have a flood of ideas here. Sure, I, sure. I wanted to remind people about your documentary. Too. Okay. Yep. Tell them Morning about. Sun. The, the film is about my my mother's murder. Uh, it happened about thirty years ago, a little more, by her then boyfriend, who was an abusive relationship. Right. Um, it, it, domestically violent situation went unreported because it's, of a lot of shame and, and, and a lot of fear. He goes back into prison and talks to this dude. It's, yeah. a, it's quite a moving documentary. No, it's, I watched it. It's yeah. fantastic. Okay, so that's available on all the platforms, so I, iTunes. I bring Amazon. it up because that's a little snippet of the traumatic history. Sure, 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 it is there. The Morning okay. Sun. Thank you. The traumatic heritage, you know, in your childhood and young adult, you know, young mm-hmm. life. Uh, and then addiction kicked in, and sure, then recovery, sure, sure. and then you've had a bunch of therapies. You're doing something very interesting now. Mike, do you know about this? Mm-mm. No, this this will love to hear. Because Dave, I really was excited for you to talk to Dave because his his recovery reminds me of yours. 
in that it's it, shitty. No, it's not no. shitty. <laughs> but he has some shitty feelings left over. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and so he keeps kind of you know his, his recovery is on point. He's doing his stuff. He's had lots of therapy and gotten sort of as much as he can. I gotten a lot out of it. Let's a be lot. Fair. My life has become beautiful. Yeah. And now it's just a matter of feeling it. Right. His feelings aren't connected, or the, at least the good feelings aren't so connected. Right. Those does that resonate the for you? The positive ones aren't connecting. Does yet. that resonate for you a it little does. bit? It does. I mean, that, I, I get frustrated that, you know, I, I, I haven't been in recovery all that long, but it'll be 15 years in October. That's, that's, a, good chunk a, of time. that's a long time. That's a massive right. yeah. amount of time. Anything more than 10 years, you're in 20, people stop counting after 20 right. yeah. times. But my point is, is that you'd think that after even you know, seven, eight years, seven there would be this. This notion of like, hey, I feel great about life, mm-hmm. and there was this this moment, probably around around seven or eight years, where I started to almost get this emotional decline, even though sure. I continued to not use and drink. Sure, I, I felt this emptiness that was still existing. Were you that, still that, actively uh, working towards your spiritual connection? <sighs> because that is the key, and I, I'm with you in the fact that I tend to put that off from time to time right i i no. i mean in that i i thought that as long as i continually you know work a program mm-hmm. that I, I got all bases covered but that I, is part of that program that right. they that they suggest is to have a spiritual part of your element of your program that you work on a daily basis right and that you are in constant contact with a higher power, whatever that is to you. I would argue and Mike is because you know on the spectrum. I, I get to see the full spectrum. Right, of right, people right. Engage in that way. Mm-hmm. He's pretty good. Okay, pretty so good. I'm good about it. But it's, it's a lot of his stuff is better than he gives himself. Sure, you know the, what I'm saying. The trouble is, is that I allowed uh, real life adult issues to get in the way of me, and and it's and it's it's bullshit. But I I convinced myself that. Uh, Spending too, enough hours at work, devoting myself to being a, a husband or a father or both, it, it gets in the way of me doing woo woo nonsense like meditation and prayer sure, sure, and things, sure. and and that's all. It's all BS, you know. Right. I, yeah, I mean, but, but being a father and a husband is part of your spiritual program. Yes. Yes, but it we, is. We, we talked about it last time you and I did a podcast where I said I'd love to be able to sit here and say like, oh, I had a daughter and my life completely changed, and now I'm just this super positive person. And although I, I, I can't express how much I love my daughter, I still feel like, you know, pretty worthless a lot. I still feel like life's not worth living a lot. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. so yeah. that, that's and, the and there's some ex- ex- existential issues that I have consistently throughout my sobriety and I've been in and out of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that th- th- some... th- that's the moment I was hoping you guys would connect on that. Right. Because it feels the same to me. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I've definitely been there and I struggle with that on it, you know. Often, you know, more often than I'd like to admit, right. to be honest with you. So in answer to what Dr. Drew's getting at is I've, I've recently been um, experimenting and working with the psychedelics. It's, you're not experimenting. You're, well, you're under a carefully managed thing. Right. But yeah. I don't I don't want to be irresponsible about it on a public platform. No, 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 where, no, 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 no. We're not advocating it. I'm just right. saying this is, this this is, is something just an interesting. Okay. So in, Extre- it's an extreme intervention. Yeah. In, in the sense of. Opening up, because what really I'm, I'm learning is that it's the ego that stands in my way sure. of everything, of everything. And so the idea for me is to obliterate that as much as I can. And so I've been working in a very, you know, in a very uh, structured sense in the world of psychedelics to in a therapeutic sense and not i'm not talking about going up you know going to coachella and dropping right. acid you know <laughs> what I mean? and, and, and expecting like my life to you know this is you know specific treatment with a intention with a journey and then integration and process if you if you watch the documentary becoming carrie grant Yes. He had the same exact treatment. And I had watched that documentary like the day before I last saw That's you. That's crazy. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Now, what Cary Grant was doing was microdosing LSD. It's not clear what was going on. That's it, it, what they it, say in the well, film. No, because he, he at one point says he was given a large dose. And I was okay. like, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know what – I don't think – that was a different time. Right. <laughs> Who it knows was what he was time. doing? Who knows That's what he was doing? Do you, do but he felt it was very beneficial to him. Yes. I, I mean, I think what you're saying is is really valuable to a lot of people, even people well, not well, in recovery. Well, let's be, be fair. Well, what he's saying is that you need to continue to strive to get better. No, That's but, really uh, what he's saying. What I'm because, saying is about this, the Because this treatment could go bad. Yes, it, <laughs> it could. It could go very and it, bad. And it could, it could it potentially... Still could go bad. If there's a trauma survivor... 
and without the right supervision or the right medical care None of goes that. into this, it could be more traumatic. But, right. And the question oh, yeah. becomes, at what point is it worth the risk? That's exactly. the point. But go ahead about the ego. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, you started off by saying it's about destroying the ego, which I, I couldn't agree with more. And, and you're, you're, you're lying if you say that your ego doesn't get in the way sometimes of being as pure a human being as you want to be. Sure. Understandably, isn't it harder to defeat your ego when you're Dave Navarro? You're perfect looking. You play sold out shows, and you're this. But your rock perception, star, your you know? perception is not what goes on in my head. No, but at the same he, time, he like, has I'm the same exact stuff. Just, you know. Justifiably, isn't it harder to defeat the ego when your ego has played in front of stadiums and has sold platinum records and has? Well, let me know, let me exp- let me say this. The answer to that question is. Is it possible to defeat the ego entirely? I doubt it. And I don't think that's smart to try and defeat it entirely because it protects us from a lot of really potentially damaging things. That's what it's for. I I would argue that we're using a term that may not even apply to what you guys are. Ego is a very well. It's a, it's a broad. Term. It's a broad yeah, term for yeah. defenses. It's a it's a broad. Uh, something is preventing you from connecting to the, yes. the hum, humanity and, and and to yourself in a larger way. Sure. Okay. Yes, huh? and 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 you know, as an entertainer, a, a healthy amount of ego is is important. Sure. It's vital. And that's, you know, turned on at a certain amount of time for a performance. I'm talking about the ego that gets in the way of the, the authentic self. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And especially relating now, with people now, like you and I. Personally, I think emotionally focused therapy can go a long way for many people to that. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. To that end. But it takes a long time and it's a lot of work. I mean, I've been in it for about 17 years. EFT? Emotionally focused therapy? Or, it depends oh, on just, no, just therapy. I've, yeah. been, I've seen a cognitive therapist for... Yeah, yeah, see, I don't, I, that's what he's doing now, too. Is it, CBT. Yeah. Do you have PTSD? I don't know. You have I mean, a, you I, have I certainly, you know, you have a whiff of that stuff. I, I had, I had, uh, you know, sexual abuse, and I, I, yeah. I, I had some issues. Certainly, how old was the sexual abuse? Uh, thirteen. I was just about to turn fourteen. Oh man. Okay. So you were, oh man. So you were aware of what's going on is wrong, right? And you were in touch with the shame, right? Well, it, and the shame didn't come into play until after, and that was the strange part. A lot of people pass off, uh, much like when you hear the news story about, um. The the eighth grade or the freshman kid who bangs his teach his mm-hmm. male kid who bangs his t- female his teacher, teacher yeah. everyone's like well but there's she was nineteen years old I totally wanted I was a willing participant of course okay but um when I got done I was like this is not something is wrong yeah and I it was so bad that I didn't even brag about it to my friends understood you know understood but that's shame yeah yeah, yeah for sure that is shame and that is something that is traumatic and that is in the PTSD world mm-hmm. we have something called EMDR which is a type of therapy used to treat and re, re, re redefine, rewire. Yeah, rewire. rewire, redefine our understanding in the brain of that traumatic event and hopefully making some kind of peace and moving away from it. The reason I, I steer away from even like focusing on it in that nature, and I know it's, it's, it's totally, um, it's, a, it's a juvenile way to look at it, to like rank PTSD, mm. but I have friends that have seen war. I, I I've talked of to you. Course. I've watched your documentary. My mother wasn't murdered okay, by her boyfriend. I didn't. I didn't get a, my leg blown off. Here's the illusion. Here's the interesting thing about that. Yeah, my trauma that I'm working on isn't murder related. Yeah, when I was 15 years old, I knew damn well that that was a terrible situation. That was awful. It felt bad, and here's the reason it felt bad because it's awful. I'm talking about early childhood trauma where the intellect is not intact enough yeah, to makes, make those connections, makes sense of it. and it's just shame and confusion and isolation and loneliness. And that's the stuff that I'm trying to strip the ego away from protecting and get through. What, what, what drug is being administered? Is it So far, I have worked with do, LSD. Do we, do we want to say this? I don't know. I don't know. We brought up the Cary Grant thing. Yeah, so let's say that. Okay, so, so. well, so I'll, one of the drugs that I've it's a I've worked with is yeah. is LSD. Yeah, and in a very safe and and I noticed when I said it, you noticed I I noticed a difference in Dave when I went back and did the uh, Dash Radio Show. I don't know if you you see it, but I feel it and see it mm-hmm. in him. Uh, but uh, you've always been such a like kind hearted dude. I mean, you yeah, never you, once no, seemed but I, this to, like this hard edged guy. You know, no, to, it's different. I think so, that uh, I was a little more. In my head, yeah, okay. I would agree. You know, I would agree with that. And now we're just having a conversation, and I'm I'm genuinely trying to effectively and responsibly share my experiences. I know that we have a lot of people 
that and a lot of them are potentially in precarious situations. I don't right. want to. I don't want to. We're not know, advocating. I don't want to advocate that. anything no. because I've been down. You know, listen. I've no. been down. I've been to twelve treatment centers. I've been to seventeen years of therapy. I do yoga. I meditate twice a day. I, yeah, whatever have, it is, this has to be a last resort. You know? and somebody that's well treated and well cared for. You you keep mentioning the sexual abuse. The, one of the traumas that you, this sticks with me that you have was when these kids held your head underwater. Yeah, that if was. If you remember, bad. if you remember, I felt that before you admitted it to me. Mm-hmm. Which means it means you're carrying it around. You uh, never you never really bring up my, uh, my the the mustachioed succubus not anymore, as much yeah. as you kind of go back to that. And because you, you, you dismiss that. What one was the much. age of that? Oh man, because uh, I have some seventh grade, like so 12, 11, 12, 13. Wow, all this is going on at the same time. Yeah. That's really yeah, 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 that's close to the same age. Yeah. I mean, I have things like that from when I was. Five years old, and I remember oh. like other kids putting me in like the dryer and turning on oh, the dryer. Oh my god! Scary yeah. stuff like that. That you know that I all I did was internalize it as like there's something wrong with me. There's some. There's a reason why I'm the one. You know what I mean? And you you make that you it becomes a story for yourself that you carry into your adult life, and that's mm-hmm. really not serving you a, or a, anyone. A, a, no. nar- a narrative. We have to take another break. When we come back, we will do your call. So stay with us. Stand hold, everybody. If you didn't know already, we have a YouTube channel. Go to YouTube slash DRDREW, YouTube slash Dr. Drew. See the live videos and podcasts there. Subscribe, and you'll get it when we go live. Find the channel. Get the videos today. But also be sure to download the podcast and listen to them as well. We appreciate your listenership. We appreciate your support. And uh, we'll keep this thing going as long as you want us to. We are back. And, Mike, you were just saying that, you know, People might hear that and go, oh, I'm going to try that. But yeah. Well, I better run out and get some. And, and the truth is, is like, it, it, you know, make it clear that there's, you got to get to that point first. And Dave Navarro is an example of a man who's given thorough, thorough and decades comprehensive of, effort into his recovery. Decades of sobriety, long yeah. traditional therapy. Because I, I know people me. that are like, hey, you know, I, I'm addicted to, uh, I'm addicted to pills, and I drink every day. I, I've been clean for four weeks, and now I'm going to Peru to do ayahuasca. No, and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Give it like a decade. And Ten then years we'll of recovery yeah, 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 and yeah. The CBT and some therapies. Yeah, none of this is evidence-based either. So Dave is trying something that's yeah, you know, I, yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely on the uh, perimeter but, of but something. I, that... I, I just commend you both for going for full recovery, which I think is an important concept. They're stopping using. There's recovery, yeah. and then there's full recovery. I have nothing, nothing about drugs and alcohol that is euphoric in recall. I, there's nothing about it that I sit and go, I must go back to that. But is there still yeah, something? Disagree. Is there still something that is still attractive about it? Doesn't maybe not euphoric. I, I I think that the the substances themselves I have a romance with, yes. but there's nothing Two about words, m- Mad Men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drew, <laughs> Drew loves this story. What's the Mad Men story? So, uh, yeah. you know, Mad Men is on Sunday. N- was on Sunday Favorite nights. Tattoo. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at my Don the Draper sh- tattoo. Shadow. <laughs> that is a great tattoo. It's the best one I have. Uh, the uh, the best one I have is Lemmy's signature because of the story tat- <laughs> oh, uh, uh, attached to it. Um, D- Mad Men was on Sunday nights on mm-hmm. AMC. Mm-hmm. Great. And so, you know, Drew and I did Love Line on Sunday nights for many years, and and. Uh, I would watch right before I'd go in. Well, there was an episode probably about four seasons in where Don realizes he has a drinking problem. Mm -hmm. And in very mid-early 60s fashion, he's not going to do anything about it except for taper off a little bit. Yeah, I remember that. He's going to go dry for a little while. (laughs) So it's his first day at work where he has decided, I'm not going to have a drink today. And Sterling and everybody get in, and they start pouring themselves cocktails in there. And Don is grabbing the chair... Uh, that he's sitting in very tightly and listening to the sound of the ice clinking around in the glasses, and he's getting a bit nervous. And, he's getting and, we've, and we've learned since that John Hamm is, is a recovering right, guy. Yeah. Right, So he was really tapping oh, into something. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. And he's yeah. getting anxiety-ridden, and I am watching this, and uh, I'm always you know very impressed by the detail of Mad Men. And out of the blue, I do not feel it coming on at all. I... Projectile vomit onto my really? onto my living room table. <laughs> like I had a visceral. It wasn't like, oh man, my stomach's hurting. I better run to the bathroom. Just, yeah. It so was a intense. visceral intent. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? The? I don't know if that's a euphoric. Re- recall. Well, it's but it's but it's your body's memory, right? Yeah. The body's yeah. reacting okay. to the stimulus. That's the power of it. Is what it is. My my what I what I miss 
is not the chemical or the what it don't you know what the rewards of the chemicals were, but it's it's the secrecy, it's yeah. the sneaking around, it's the paraphernalia, it's the ugly like. Think about well, that. I'm not, you know I what I mean? Not, put, do some therapy there. Yes. Well, you know, I'm just saying if I was to talk about <laughs> if, if I was just going to talk about the elements of it that I thought yeah, were yeah. attractive, it's it's that it's that narrative where well, it's like. It's you very know, important. You become a caricature. I think it's very important for someone like you to say that because I can say that and it, it maybe falls on deaf ears. But there was a part of me that there's nothing I can do now that makes me feel like I'm cool. Like I'm the guy on the action film or the guy mm-hmm. in – I'm not a, I'm not the, the villain in a Tarantino film. It's weird film. to me. But As when a- I was going to hook – going into bad neighborhoods to hook up drugs and driving around in oh, yeah. the back of cars that – of guys badass. that I know. And this guy, guys who were in and out of jail – there was, I was in love with this, like you said, the secrecy and the and the the, the glorification mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. living on the fringes kind of as, aspect of drugs. That um, I, I there's nothing I can do now where I go like, yeah, I'm cool. Back then, I there were moments, a lot of moments where I felt cool. You know, as a normie, it's a confusing. That's a confusing thing. Well, I think that's right. a whole element of the addiction that really doesn't get treated all that well. well. I'm just thinking that, and it, it, it's it's a uh, it's an identity because people are addicted to using the needle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that is an activity. It's not. Oh no, people talk about that, but this this piece, which is almost a self, a part of the self, right? But I think expressed. that I think that they're your traumatized part, self, part of the same of the same pie in yeah, the yeah. sense that. Because there's a narrative that goes with the the needle user yeah, yeah, yeah. with the with the well, guy. The needle going, is immediately reinforced. There's a so there's a biology. But it's it's that. a lifestyle that you have to yeah. let go of. In no, addition to the actual addiction to the chemical. I, I listen, when, whenever we talk, we used to we used to talk about having separate heroin groups because the culture of heroin was mm-hmm. everyone related. To what you guys are saying. Look, we are. Do I have to take another break still? No. no okay. Let's take calls. We got lots yeah, of please. calls. Let's yeah. just get one. Laney, are you there? Laney. Oh, hey, Dave. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey. Hey, Drew. Hey you live? You, you live. live, woman. See what's a greeting, Dave? It's All just, right. It's like aloha. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, just recently, my brother has relapsed. He was clean for a year and a month. Um, and we are extremely close, but I agreed to not see him for about a year until he, like, reached that year mark of sobriety. Smart. And, um... Oh. Yeah, and so uh, this, I guess next month is a family wedding, and my aunts that are overbearing kind of baby him, um, they're going to drive him to this wedding that he's going to go to, and he's super excited to see me, Mm. and I just don't think that it's a healthy situation to be. So my question is, um, do you guys think that I should go? Or how do you think I should go with this situation? Give us a little more on the detail. You, he, he, oh, I'm going to weird feedback here. Uh, yeah, a younger brother, older brother, um, what what drug? He's older. He's, he's 35. Mm-hmm. What drug? Uh, yeah, uh, meth and heroin. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, so it's a crapshoot um, as to how this guy's going to even healthy. turn up. Mm. You know? Well, he rel- he's in a relapse right now or he had just recently relapsed? He just recently relapsed, was in a hospital for about a week. So as far as you know, he's abstinent again right now. Mm, Yeah, as far as I know. But he's he's working. And you're agreeing. Hold Um, on. This is the longest. This is the longest, like, he's been clean. He's been dealing with this, like, drug addiction for about 10 years. Okay, but but you had said you made a deal that you weren't going to see him until he'd been sober a year, right? And so that clock has started. That clock has started over again, correct? Uh, no, I, I actually gave in on the 10th or 11th month, and I saw him, had dinner with him, and that was about it. Um, and then I guess like two months after that, he relapsed. Do you have an Al-Anon sponsor? Uh, no, he has like a, a you, counselor, you, 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 which you. is the owner of the state house. You. Or do I know? Okay. Don't do anything without an Al-Anon sponsor. That, that, that's, that okay. is bad times. So go to an Al-Anon meeting, get a sponsor, discuss with her what you should do, and possibly it'd be okay to go. It possibly be okay, but it's up. That's between you and your sponsor. You have to. You ever heard? You ever heard the myth of the Minotaur, Ariadne's cord, the golden thread? Here's my here's my fat Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> your fat Minotaur. Look at that. 
I show it on the video. <laughs> show, show, show. My friend Ryan as a fat minotaur <laughs> holding a <laughs> bottle of champagne instead of a sword. It's so hot. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I just vomited. You're so turned on by it, too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but is it, it can, How dare I? I've only beat uh, off to him once. <laughs> but can she go with somebody supporting her and just, if there's an interaction, say, look, appreciate to see you, but I'm here for this yeah. wedding yes. and these this is the intention i'm not here to catch up that's right i'm, I'm happy you're happy or think, well whatever but, but i'm there's no way you can't get sucked in if you don't have somebody there like a alanon sponsor that's what the, you need the only people in agreement to the whole i mean i mean leave them alone let them recover or me and my mother we have two aunts that are very overbearing and they had uh they did raise him but they're very overbearing, and they'll pick him up if he needs food. Yeah, they'll get him that's food. That's between him, he that's him and his recovery. You don't, and you know don't what? micromanage his recovery. The reality is that they can't expect change unless the family changes. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. You know? And we can't get them to understand but that. Hang on now. It's, it's I'm going to be a little, uh, a little harsh. That includes you, and you have yeah. to go to Al Anon or you're not changing. Yeah. And I'm sorry, what was the name? Al- oh, boy. That's not good. <laughs> Al-Anon. Al-Anon. You yeah. must go immediately and get a sponsor. Al-Anon. Al-Anon. Is it, these are not mild. These are not casual recommendations. These are, if you do not do this, you are actively contributing to his demise. Okay? Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Excellent. Got it. Thank you, Ed. Uh Let's talk to, uh, wait a minute. Where is this guy? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sean. He's on line 13. Are these, are these the line numbers that are up here? Sorry, this is our first day in the in the clubhouse here, so... Okay, hey Sean. Guys. Hey. A uh, long-time listener, uh, first-time caller, you live. You live. You live, sir. Um, you, guys, you guys ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, my girl, or ex of eight months, uh, she just broke up with me yesterday. Um, on Friday, she took me to her aunt's wedding. It was, like, not, it was pretty casual. There's, both of them have been married before. Um, her the guy who sexually assaulted her in high school was at the wedding and it was about 20 minutes before uh, anything was happening. And I noticed it was him because I, um, I looked him up on Facebook way back when she told me about it. I was like the first guy she ever talked to about it. And it was like, we worked it through and she was like, you know, she recovered from it. You know, she buried it down, never really told anybody about it. Uh, he was a family friend. He was a, a cousin's friend. So, I approached him. Um, I didn't cuss at him. I wasn't ready to fight him. I was just, I approached him like, Hey man, you, owe, you owe her an apology. Uh, and then maybe about 10 people saw this scene. Um, and the cousin, uh, you know, uh, had to, you know, he grabbed me and pushed me away. And so I, I assume he knows. And then like, I, her dad came walking up and he like, I broke down from him. I was like, Hey, that's him. He's right there. Why don't you, uh, Does the dad- uh well, why is this okay? Why is, does the dad know? Why is this, this here? Happened? Why is he here? Did the dad know? This um, I told the dad. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I told the dad back in um, December. He never knew before, and that was a a big problem for me and uh, my girlfriend at the right, time, so just let's, because let's cut to I went behind her back. Let's cut to it. She 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 broke up with you because of this incident. Yes. Okay. My guess is, and this is only a guess, is that she doesn't want you handling her affairs let's say it, it just adds to her feelings of powerlessness right this is stuff this is for yeah, her and to I was, manage go ahead go ahead uh, well okay so I was just because last time we talked about it was a couple months ago and she was furious about it she was like ready like to almost do something about it and she was like yeah if we ever see him he shouldn't ever be at a family thing because they cut him out and I just wasn't prepared, so I kind of I wasn't in full control. But I wasn't like screaming or losing. I was just I, like, "Hey, I, this I, isn't okay." Yeah, I get it. And um, I I get it. Yeah, and and I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I didn't mean to repeat myself. But I, but I'm not sure that it's. Uh-huh. it's I, I think the, the as a male, your first instinct is, "Oh, she's mad at me because I was aggressive." I'm not sure that's it here. No, I think it. I think Doctor Drew's exactly right. And total, dude, I. One hundred percent, totally understand where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah, I understand yeah. your motives. I do yeah. not think you did anything immoral or, or wrong. wrong. No, but I can. I I'll bet you dollars to donuts. It's more of, wow, this is so my issue, and I don't need you getting involved with it. I've dealt with it my own way. She's probably invested a lot of effort into dealing with it in her own way, and you've just kind of totally hijacked the system. Right. You sort you of know? undermined her opportunity should it ever come to do whatever she wants to do. Now it's kind of all blown up. 
So I, I, I don't know. Got it. I, you know, I understand. Understood. You're, yeah, you're abs- that sounds absolutely right. I, I haven't heard that perspective yet. I, I uh, remember a call we had on Love Line a long time ago that a, a husband was mad at his – excuse me. A, a wife was mad at her husband because the dad – her dad used to molest her. And she had worked a long mm-hmm. time to get this guy to get – so that at least the dad and her – we're on good terms somewhat. And he's like, no, fuck that. He molested you for a decade. I'm going to go in and he physically confronted the dad. Of course, his motives were pure, but she was furious at him because she's like, I've worked with therapists and, and yeah. different doctors for how long, however long to get to the point where I'm at now. And you just took it upon yourself to do what you think is right. And, and that's where I think people get kind of you know pissy about it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. We got to move on. Good luck, buddy. Some yeah. Hey, thank you, you guys. Well yeah. done. Buddy. Yeah. Have a good day. All right, man. You've got to go now to uh, we're take, uh, Melissa. She's on sixteen, whatever that is. This is for you and uh, Mike and Dave here. Go ahead, Melissa. Hey, Doctor Drew, Dave. Hello, other Melissa. dude. What's <laughs> up? <Hi>. Other dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What's happening? Is there anything else we so, can yeah, do for you? Uh, my question was. Uh, to Dave, I was wondering if he has any tips on staying sober. Uh, he mentioned, you know, getting out of the head. I think that's my biggest challenge yeah, uh, yeah. with five years of sobriety. One of the best so ways. So how I, do you do it? I mean, I go to live shows. With you, you I'll know, tell you, the number you know, one best way to get out of your head in recovery is to <laughs> be of service to yeah. others. Mm-hmm. Be yeah. of service to others. Help someone else. But but not. it's not... I think people get confused about service because they see Angelina Jolie out there serving the. I world. don't mean that. I no, don't mean you. That. You mean just paying. Being, you mean blow paying jobs. attention, Actually, servicing, get on your knees, service someone. Cat. What I mean is cat. hold the door for somebody. Yes. Be kind to somebody. If there's if the person at Starbucks is an idiot and doesn't listen to the order that you said because youth of today is used to texting and reading, yeah. so they don't hear anything anymore. Which is, by the way, if you notice, I <laughs> snuck my own little agenda in there. <laughs> be kind and patient, <laughs> and, and and be honor okay. that person in some way. Like identify something in that person yeah. that needs to be served and serve it in that moment. That's one what I mean. on one is where this happens. Here's another thing: five years. I'll, I'll actually two things. Five years was when I really started to struggle. So I'll just give you that. Five, five and seven are tough. I, yep. I will give you that. So that maybe maybe and there's comfort there. Number ten. Secondly. Uh, Five years sober. Are you sponsoring anybody else? She's not really sober. She's not, you're not. You're not in the program, are you? Yeah, I haven't done any AA work. Yeah. And there you why go. I wanted to call in to get some tips. Well, we're not allowed to I say. I haven't done any work, and I feel like it's been a rough road. You it's know? tricky. It's like everything's coming full circle now. Like everyone's left because I was one of those people where I was like, I'm not going to be one of those people that get rid of all my friends because you know I'm doing something differently. Hey, let me but tell honestly, you something. They just it. Let me. Slow, let, they slowly faded. Let me. Let me. Let me chime in. I can get rid of friends. Listen, I'm in the entertainment industry, and I work with in a world of drug addicts and alcoholics. It's just not a reality for me to get rid of everybody who might pose you don't, a th- You don't want to. There's no reason. I don't want to. I want to work on myself. I don't want to excommunicate everybody that is in my life. But they kind of naturally just drifted. That's you know? for so sure. But, but Melissa, if you, if you there, have the right, Melissa, if you have the right support, if you're working a program and evolving in a way that – it's an evolution. It's not just not drinking or not using. Like you said, you lose the identity almost. You almost lose the identity along with the chemical substance. I think that's the hardest part because you're like so lost. Well, so I, I think you know volunteering. That's great. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I mean, maybe I should do the program. Yeah, you, what you, do you think? I, yes. Let me tell you something. Yes, I have bro. never met anyone who really worked a program and had a horrible experience with it. Ever. Ever. Not one time. Right. And if they say they have, they right. haven't done the 12 take steps your, uh, that the programs are based upon. Sure. Okay, we're going to put you on hold and talk about it, Melissa. Thank you for calling. Uh, so, But that that is a, a really important point, right? And and people, I used to tell people in treatment, I was go, look, no sponsor, no treatment. No sponsor, no treatment. I, just, I would just repeat that and repeat mm-hmm. that and repeat that. And that's just the way it goes. I, I, I mean, you know, you, Dave brought up, the immediately brought up, being of service and that is the best advice ever and it goes far beyond you know recovery but i will say that there's never been times when i got a, a there's never been more of a, a peace within me than when i was helping other addicts who right. are maybe younger in their mm-hmm, recovery mm-hmm. and that's not because uh it was because i could pat myself on the back it's just that that was a very clear example of me being of service and i wasn't trying to beat anybody over the head with the idea of recovery or someone was genuinely looking me in the eyes and asking for help and i 
I actually had some help you to could offer. Give it. I couldn't believe it, yeah. and it felt so. Yeah. It, it was like it just that was those were those you know few moments when I could really pick it out and say like this is what it means. I mean, even in my job, like you know, if you want to talk about egos, we're talking about rock music, a band of egos. That's all it is, yeah. right? So when I find myself getting in my way, getting in my head, getting carried away, I'm not saying be a doormat, but I'm saying I can pause and and say to myself, okay. This is obviously getting very sticky here and uncomfortable. How can I serve this situation? Right. Or how can I serve myself? And sometimes serving myself by removing myself from it is the right action. But it's being able to have clarity to make that distinction and not perpetuate the problem, right. which is what I tend to do when you're unchecked and untreated. With that, gentlemen, we've got to wrap this thing up. All right. Uh, it's been good a, times. Yeah, it's been very good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much again to Dave Navarro. Dave Navarro a, on pleasure. Twitter, at yeah. Dave Navarro. Uh, and then is there anything else uh, you'd like to plug, sir? No, Ink, Ink Master. Ink Master. Spike Dash TV. Radio. Dash Radio is where my podcast is and iTunes. and uh, just dark, it's bit, dark Matter on iTunes. It's just honestly just a pleasure to be here. I, I appreciate you yeah, guys I, I, I feel like we've lost track of you for a little while. It's good to see you back again. I'm, I'm glad we, to be back. We've, we've, I've known you a long time. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Right, yeah. uh, yes, we understand. You guys don't look your age. You're all well. You're Dave doesn't. <laughs> I just, I was, I thought he was. I just thought he'd stayed the same. It made some weird deal with the devil. Or he, he, he definitely made some like Robert Johnson crossroads deal with the devil. Uh, I'm not uh, opposed to that deal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Facebook Live followers. Stay tuned for another hour of radio history. Hashtag You Live. Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew Podcast, the This Life Podcast, and the Adam and Drew Podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's News. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You live.